Hey guys, Miss Peterson here. So today what we got going on is a thermodynamics free response problem. This one is from the 2016 AP exam. So right here we have a PV diagram of a cycle. Two moles, okay, that's going to be important. N equals two moles of a monatomic ideal gas. Basically, we can apply the equations on the equation sheet. Are enclosed in a cylinder by a movable piston. The gas is taken through the thermodynamic cycle shown above, and the piston has a cross-sectional area of 5 times 10 to the negative 3 area um, meters squared. 5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared. We've got point A, B, C, and back to A. Number A1 says calculate the force that the gas exerts on the piston in state A and explain how the collisions of the atoms will allow, with the piston will allow the gas to exert a force on it. Okay, so first let's go ahead and calculate the force. Now, remember that pressure is force over area. So if we're talking about the force, we're given the area, that's the equation that we're going to use. We reorganize that and we get that the force equals the pressure times the area. Okay, so when you're reading off your axis, don't forget about the units on that axis. So if we're plugging in our numbers, we have force times the pressure 1.0 times 10 to the fifth pascals. Um, you might remember that a pascal is a newton per meter squared. Okay, and that's how those units kind of work out. So then we have the area, five times 10 to the negative three meters squared. We plug that into our calculator, or you can do it by units one times five. It's five, 10 to the fifth times 10 to the negative third is 10 to the second. So we get 500 newtons of pressure, okay? So that is how much force it exerts on that piston. Now, how does it exert that force? Now, in these types of questions, they're looking for a couple of different things. Because in the problem, it already said collisions, just saying the atoms are colliding with the piston won't actually earn you the credit. You need to go a little bit deeper than that. Okay? You might talk something about the atoms moving randomly in straight lines. Okay, They always move in straight lines. And then when they collide with the piston, their momentum is changed. And this goes way back to AP Physics 1 and the impulse momentum theorem, but anytime you have a change in momentum, that means there was a force exerted for some amount of time. So when their momentum changes, that is the evidence that they exerted a force on the piston. So all of those collisions of it randomly colliding with the piston will exert that force. Okay. Number two, calculate the temperature of the gas in state B and indicate the microscopic property of the gas that is characterized by the temperature. Temperature is average kinetic energy. Temperature is average kinetic energy. Temperature is average kinetic energy. Temperature is the average, is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the atoms, okay? Average kinetic energy, it's a measure of how much they're moving more. If they're moving more, they got more energy, they're at a higher temperature, okay? So now we're going to calculate that temperature. So we have a couple different equations that relate to temperature. You might think, oh, we're talking about energy. There's that three halves um, KBT equation, okay? But we don't know their kinetic energy. So temperature is the kinetic energy, but we don't know their kinetic energies. This is a good old PV equals NRT. As I say, pervnert, it's a good old pervnert problem. So we're using that ideal gas lot to solve for the temperature. So temperature is going to be the pressure times the volume divided by the number of moles times the gas constant. Okay. So then we can go ahead and plug in our numbers. We have its pressure at state B. 
which is 1 times 10 to the 5th Pascals times the volume at state B, 0 0.10. Note the units are just meters cubed. Okay. Divided by N, the number of moles, that is 2 moles. And the gas constant, which is on your equation sheet, it is 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. Yep. So, uh, da, 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 we plug it into our calculator. 1 times 10 to the 5th times 0.1 divided by 2 times 8.31 gives you 6. 101.7, which, given our sig figs, I would probably just round and say 602 or 600 Kelvin, okay? I think the answer, the scoring guidelines say 602. If you said 600, you would still be correct because of all of those significant digit type things, okay? And if you want to see how the units work out, uh, a Pascal is a Newton per meter squared, and then we're times in it by meter cubed, and then dividing it by a joule, okay? A joule is, oh, but then we have the moles in there. Oh yeah, this was two moles, so mole and mole cancel out. Um, a joule, remember, is a kilogram meter squared per velocity squared. Uh, oh, sorry, I was thinking velocity squared is the units, but meters per second squared. Okay, um, when in doubt, if you can't remember the units, but you remember the equation, like Newton, I might not remember that a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, but I know the formula for force is mass times acceleration. So the units for the Newton are mass times acceleration units. So you can kind of see how that m squared, one of those cancels out there. Okay, those meters cancel out with those meters. We got one more meter left there to cancel out that last one, kilograms per second squared. Okay, and you end up with Kelvin left over. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Or you just trust your equation and the units will work out. Okay. Predict qualitatively how the internal energy of the gas changes. So internal energy is delta U. Okay, as it is taken from state A to state B. So we're looking for delta U from A to B. Justify your prediction. So delta U is proportional to temperature, which is proportional to PV. Um, you can also kind of think on here of the ISO lines that would be there. Um, you can see that B is at a higher temperature. So as it's taken from a, state A to state B, it's going up in temperature. P times V is also going up. Here it's 0 0.04. Here it's 1 times 0 0.1, so 0 0.01. So that is going up. All of those are great justifications for saying that delta U increases. Okay, so we have a positive change in internal energy because it's proportional to temperature and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if we wanted to, oh, we're going to calculate the energy added to the gas by heating. That's talking about Q as it's taken from state A to state C along the path A, B, C. So we want Q from A to B to C, what that path would be, and we're actually going to be calculating it. Now, you might remember that you can't find heat directly from a PV diagram. We're probably going to have to use some combination of this equation in order to find it, okay? So let's kind of reason this out. Let's look back here. So if we're going from A to B to C, from A to B the volume is expanding. It's doing work under a constant pressure. Okay. And we can find that work by using negative P delta V aka calculating the area under that curve. Now from B to C the work is zero. It's not expanding or compressing so the work is going to be zero. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve that out. Okay, we'll start with the work. Work from A to B equals negative P delta V. So we have negative one times 10 to the fifth 
times that change in volume, which was 0 0.10 minus 0 0.04. And, oh, and this was past guess. And, oh, yeah, there's that negative sign. Okay, the volume is increasing. Remember, when the volume increases, we say the gas did negative work. The positive work is defined as work done on something. So we do expect a negative answer here. Plugging it into the calculator, and I get negative 6,000 joules. Okay. So negative 6,000 joules from A to B, and then the work from B to C, we said was zero. So for this whole process, okay, the work from A to B to C is negative 6,000 joules. Okay, now we need the other piece of the equation. If we're looking for Q, we can't find that directly, but Q is going to be delta u minus the work. We got the work, now we need to find that internal energy change from point A to point C. Now, you might remember that internal energy, oops, internal related to temperature, okay? So what we're gonna need to find is we're gonna need to find the gas's internal energy at state C and at state A. Okay, we're going to need to find those internal energies. Um, now, there's a couple different ways that we could do this. Um, the easiest is probably going to be to use the internal energy equation. Internal energy equation isn't on the equation sheet. Very inconvenient, I know. But what is on the equation sheet is this guy. K equals three halves kb t. Now, that is the kinetic energy for one atom of a monatomic ideal gas. We're talking about two moles of a monatomic ideal gas. So we would need to times this by n, the number of moles, okay? So three halves, um, actually the number of molecules, big N. Big N kb t. Now this n kb can also be written as n R, the number of moles times R. Okay, and this is for K, the total energy. So the internal energy for this sample will be three halves N R T. Okay, but do we know the temperature of those two states? No, of course not. That would make it too easy. But what we do know is the pressure and the volume. So if we take that ideal. If we take the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, and we'd already solved it for T, we get PV over nR, okay? Notice nR, nR. It's going to actually let us simplify that equation. So if we're looking for the change in internal energy, we have three halves nR, and then we want the change in temperature. So temperature at point C minus the temperature at point A, which again, we can rewrite using that equation. So we have pressure at C times volume at C minus pressure at A times the volume at A all over NR, okay? Now the NR can cancel out, okay? They got the same denominator, it's just right there. So our internal energy becomes three halves times the pressure at C volume at C minus the pressure at A volume at A, okay? And then we can plug that into our calculator. So we have three halves times the pressure at point C. The pressure at point C is 0.5, okay? and the volume is 0.1, okay? So 0.5 times 0.1 times 10 to the fifth, don't forget that, times 0 0.1, okay? So that term minus pressure at A 
times the volume at A. Sorry for all the scrolling. The pressure at point A is 1 and the volume is 0 0.04. So over here we have 1 times 10 to the fifth times 0 0.04. We plug that all into our calculator. 3 halves times, open parentheses, 0. 0.5 times 10 to the fifth times 0. 0.1 minus 1 times 10 to the fifth times 0. 0.04. And we get 1,500 joules. Okay? So delta U from A to C is 1,500 joules. There we go. Now, all that's left is to solve for Q. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll do that over here. We said Q is going to be delta U minus W using that equation right there. So we have 1,500 joules minus negative 600. Oh, not 6,000. 600 joules, giving us our final answer of 7,500 joules of energy must be added to the gas by heating. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. That was a lot of calculations for one problem. But if we look at the next problem, the next problem says determine the change in the total kinetic energy of the gas atoms as it's taken directly from state C to state A. So the change in the kinetic energy from state C to state A. Now, didn't we just use the kinetic energy to calculate it from A to C? Yes, yes we did, okay? So, if it's from A to C, now we're going from C to A, it's just the opposite. If the change in energy was 1,500 joules to get it to there, to get it back, it will be negative 1,500 joules. And that's it. That is the answer. Um, another way you could have done it is you could have gone back to that equation and done that the total kinetic energy is 3 halves nRT and calculated it all again, but you're going to get the same answer. Um, you could find that kinetic energy at each of those two points and subtract them. You'll get the same answer. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, cool.